All right, today we are going to be working on law of sines and law of cosines. Uh, this this video is for my dual enrollment students, um, both classes. So I think what I'm going to do for this next test is to give you all, all the same test. Um, Y'all can work together. I don't care. Um, it's probably going to be, um, I guess, 30 questions, 35 questions. This test will not nearly be as hard as the last one, nor will this material be as hard as the last material. So I hope you all are all okay. Uh, let's get started. So we are going to be talking about uh, the law of signs first we're going to talk about law of signs first now what we're going to be talking about here is we're not going to be talking about right triangles we talked about right triangles and we did sokotoa and we did all that and, and proportions and stuff like that now this is going to be a little different okay i mean we're going to use proportions and here's the formula you're going to use here you're going to say um the sine of a is equal uh, divided by the side of A is equal to the sine of B is equal to the side. I mean, divided by the side of B is equal to the sine of C over the side of C. So what we're saying here is that the sine of A divided by A is equal to the sine of B divided by B. So we're just setting up these proportions and the triangle has to be a certain proportion it can't be crazy size they don't fit together if you if they don't fit together if they are not proportionally equal they're not going to fit so let me give you an example hold on just a second let me let me go get a book all right so the first problem we're going to use is uh, we have this triangle right here and this angle is 43 this angle is 57 and this side is 4.56 okay and we're going to say that this is a this is angle b this is angle c this is side a your side is always across from your angle. This is side B. This is angle C and this is little c right here. Okay, so we need to find the question is going to say solve the triangle. And we need to find angle C and we need to find side B and we need to find side C. Okay. Can everybody see that okay? All right, so first of all, we know that a triangle has 183, has 180 degrees. So I'm just going to say 180 minus 57 minus 43. Uh, what is that, 90, 100? So C is equal to 80. We know that. We got it. We're done. Okay. Now, side B. Now, in order to do the law of sines, you have got to have an angle and a side. And, and you need to be able to use a whole pair here in order to find this B or to find this C. You've got to have both of these. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to say the sine of 43 divided by 4.56 is equal to the sine of 57 over b we've set up a proportion here and i'm going to get rid of this because i might not have room and um, i'm going to cross multiply okay so i'm going to say 4.56 times the sine of 57 is equal to b times the sine of 43. now yes you can flip flop those if you want to but for aesthetic purposes 
it's better to put the number that you know in front of the sine of 57. There are a lot of times you might say this sine of 57 times 4.56 and the 4.56 ends up in the parentheses inside of your calculator or inside of the function in your calculator and you end up getting the wrong answer. So to, to sort of help you not get the wrong answer, put the numbers in front. Maybe the same thing with B here. Now I'm trying to find B, so I am going to divide by the sine of 43. That cancels. And I'm going to get my calculator and say, let's see here. 4.56 times the sine of 57 divided by, see I messed up with that parenthesis, divided by the sine of 43. Okay, and I get 5.0, nope, 5.6075. Okay. And the book actually has us round that to one, 5.61. Okay, so that's my B, 5.61. Okay, now I'm going to do this again. And just go ahead and use the numbers that you have here. I mean, you could use... The sine of 57 divided by 5.61 you can do that but use the ones that they give you because really that's a rounded number right there and if you use the ones that are, are more concrete I, I have found in the past that your answers come out better okay so let's do this again okay I want to find what C is so I'm gonna say the sine of 43 divided by 4.56 is equal to the sine of 57. Nope, just kidding. The sine of 80 divided by C. I'm going to cross multiply. I'm going to say 4.56 times the sine of 80 is equal to C times the sine of 43. I'm going to divide by the sine of 43. Y'all see that okay? Good. All right. I'm going to say 4.56 times the sine of 80 divided by the sine of 43. And I get 6.58. So C is 6.58. Okay. So that this problem is pretty easy peasy. Right, let's try another problem. Okay, we're talking about the law of signs. And suppose I have a triangle and um, this angle right here is 39.7. And this side is 23.5 and let's say this is uh, let's say this is X and this is Y and I don't know why but this is 9.8 and this is Z and I don't know what that is okay so my picture is not going to be drawn to scale here I'm just drawing this triangle here and uh, but I see that I have an angle and that I have a side side that tells me I can use the law of signs all right now 
in the future, we're going to use law of cosines and we're not going to have a side and an angle to work with. If we have a side and an angle, again, I'm emphasizing this a lot, use the law of sines. All right, so we've got the sine of 39.7 over 23.5 is equal to now what have we got to work with here I don't have either Z I have a Y I don't have a Y angle right here but I have the side so I'm gonna say the sine of Y over 9.8 okay now whenever we don't know an angle we use the inverse functions to be able to find that angle so that's what we're gonna do right here we're gonna cross multiply and we're going to say 9.8 times the sine of 39.7 is equal to 23.5 times the sine of y. So this is 23.5, 23.5, that cancels that. And now I'm going to get this. Now there are two ways you could do this. You could go ahead and say, sine inverse of 9.8 sine of 39.7 divided by 23.5 you put it in the calculator like that or you could punch that all in and then say you know calculate all that and then say sign answer you know and then that'll get you your answer. I don't care which way you use. All right, I'm um, gonna see here, I'm gonna say sign inverse, let's see, parentheses, no, I don't need that. 9.8 times the sine of 39.7, let's see here, divided by 23.5, and I get 15.5, Four five and yeah okay so what did I find I found y that's what I found so y is 15.45 all right now Let's find Z, angle Z, and side Z. So since we know that these two angles, we know these two angles, I can say 180 minus 15.45 minus 39.7. So I'm going to say 180 minus 15.45 minus 39.7. And I get 124.85. So that's saying that angle Z is equal to 124.85. Okay, don't beat me up. I'm sorry. This this picture is not drawn to scale. I'm sorry. I will do better. I probably I probably won't draw better s s circles, squares, triangles. I'm not. I'm just gonna draw a triangle. All right. Now I'm going to find side of Z. Okay, so I'm going to say, let's see here, sine of 39.7 over 23.5 is equal to the sine of 124.85 divided by Z. Okay, so I'm going to cross multiply. This is going to be Z times the sine of 39.7 is equal to 23.5 times the sine of 124.85. Okay, I need Z by itself. I'm going to divide. Okay, so I'm going to say, let's see here, 23.5 times the sine of 124.85 
divided by the sine of 39.7 and I get 30.19 Is that right? Yeah. Okay, good. Okay, so we have solved the triangle. All right, so I've shown you how to do two different types of triangles. Now, there are weird situations that can occur in math. You could actually have a triangle that has different lengths. Let me, let me restate that. You could have two triangles that share a side that's the same, but some of the other sides are different. Okay, that's kind of that's kind of crazy that that can happen. Um, you think there'd be a certain type of uniqueness that goes with each and every triangle? I mean, if you look at Pythagorean triples, you don't really see like a three, four, five triangle sharing. The same sides as like a, a, a one two five triangle you see what I'm saying it's kind of a weird phenomenon I mean to me but you know I'm I ain't, I ain't Einstein you know what I'm saying I ain't Einstein all right so um, let's see here we got we got this triangle here and we've got an A B and C and we have B is equal to 15 and we have C is equal to 20 we have B is 29 degrees and it says solve this triangle okay so let's solve this triangle real quick and let's see here so we have the sine of 29 over 15 is equal to the sine of C over 20 so I'm going to cross multiply and say that 20 times the sine of 29 is equal to 15 times the sine of C. I'm going to divide by 15. That cancels out. And I'm going to go ahead and say the sine inverse of my answer right here. So give me just a second. Sine inverse. Say 20 times the sine of 29. Divided by 15. And I got um, C is equal to, angle C is equal to 40.27. All right. So what else do I need? Um, oh, I need to do A. Okay, so I have 180 minus angle B minus angle C we get 180 minus 29 minus 40 point whoops 0.27 okay and I get 110.73 so angle A is equal to 110.73 okay so now we know that angle A is 110.73 so we're going to try and find what a is and and i'm going to use b because i know we started with b i'm going to cross multiply this is 15 times the sine of 110.73 is equal to a times the sine of 29. i'm going to divide by the sine of 29 And 15 times the sine of 110.73, close that, divided by the sine of 29 is equal to 28.94. So side A is equal to 
four. Okay, so my first possible solution is this one. Got that. And yes. Yep, yep, yep. Got everything. And but first of all, did I? Give me just a second. Making dumb over here. Okay, so this is my first solution. There is another solution though. What if there are two angles less than 180 with a sign of uh, 0.6464? There are 40 and 140 to the degree. This gives us two possible solutions. So because this is this, then my other two angles, if, if this angle is bigger, let me, let me put this another way. Since this is 29, I could change my other angles, okay? And, and what I mean is that if this angle is 40 or 140.24, let's say angle C was equal to 140.24. Seven. Okay, and angle B is equal to 29. Then if I added them and said 140.27 plus 29, you know, then that could make angle A equal to 10.73. So just given this information and, and given that my, of course, my triangle is not drawn to scale, then I have room for two different triangles given this information. Okay. And... Let me make sure that's right. So if I have this, but what about this angle right here? Okay. If I have that, let me find, da da da, hold on. Sign of 20, all right. Okay, well, we just do it the same way. So we need to find, this is 10.73. This is 140.27. And we need to find what A is. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say the sine 
of 10.73 over A is equal to the sine of 29 over 15. I'm going to cross multiply and say 15 times the sine of 10.73 is equal to A times the sine of 29. I'm going to divide by the sine of 29. Let's say 15 times the sine of 10.73, close my parentheses, divided by 29, is equal to, that seems awfully small, 0.1. Did I do that right? Right. Right. 15 times 10 divided by, oh, the sine of 20. Five point seven six. So given this information we started with, there are two possible solutions. That's tricky. I'm sorry that that is that way, but it is. And, and the question I might ask you is, does this have two solutions? If so, what are they? You know, and, and the way you might do that is saying, well, these two angles right here are not greater than 90, so I can, I can find another one. These two are not greater than 90. I can find another one. Okay. Let's find the area of a triangle. Okay. Now, this isn't bad at all. We know that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. All right. So the area of these triangles is going to be K is equal to one half BC sine of A. Now, let's just start here for a second. I said BC, that's the side of B, the side of C, and the sine of A. Notice it's using one of each of my, my variables, my, my designations. So this could also be one half A, B, sine of C. This could also be one half A, C times the sine of of B. So I have an A, I have a C, I have a B. I have a B, I have an A, I have a B, I have a C. I have an A, I have a B, I have a C. So all of these will end up being the same thing, but maybe I don't give you certain things. So if I don't, if I gave you angles for A and C, and I don't give you the angle for B, maybe use one of these. Or if I don't give you the side of A, use this one. Okay. We'll see here. Uh, da, 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 da. Suppose I gave you this problem. Let's suppose I gave you B is equal to 42 degrees. A, the side of A, is 7.2. And C is equal to 3.4. So it's which one of these functions am I going to use to find this area given these specifications? Well, here's the angle B. I'm going to use that. There's my side of A, side of C. Just going to plug everything in. I'm going to say the area is equal to 1 half uh, times 7.2 times 
times the sine of 42 degrees. I'm going to plug it in the calculator. See, this is all real easy. 0. 0.5 times 7.2 times 3.4 times the sine of 42 degrees, and I get 8.2. That's my answer. That's all you do. Okay, so this is my first video on this chapter. I hope this helps. We'll talk about law of cosines in the next video. Uh, please stay on top of things. Do your homework. Oh, those of you who are in... What book is this? Those of you who are in Dalton State, hold on, let me give you some problems. All right, those of you who don't have or who are in Dalton State homework, do this is page 563. Let's say um, 1 through 40 odd. And this is This is recommended. Okay. Email me or text me any questions if you have any. Y'all have a great day. Bye.